Shy. Oh, you don't care, you can stay over there. It's fine as well. I'm well, getting some windows. All right. The BKK web started like 12 years ago. So the point of the BKK web was to create a community, a platform to to educate people about like, the web design. So web design at the time was a very broad term for like no marketing, SEO, design, development. And we kept doing it over the years. So every month we bring a speaker to talk about a very, very specific topic. And we don't want to be like too shallow. The point is like not to get more people like not talking like you know, in-depth talks for like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So that's what Craig is going to do tonight. And then we follow it uh, with a 45, uh, sorry, 15 minutes Q&A. So you guys can ask any questions that you want after that. So tonight we're going to have like Craig. So Craig works at Seven Peaks. So that's the office we're in. Of course, this is there as well. Uh, so Craig is a product owner. And we're going to talk how to become a product designer. So product design is a new topic. Before we talk about webmasters and web designers, then we had like no UX UI design. Product design is a step beyond that. Now, it's not enough to just do like UX and UI design. You need to understand also how to do the business side of it. So it's a, it's a broad crossover from the business side to the UX research to the UX UI design. Because it's not enough anymore to just like no, like no execute the vision of a client. You need to be also able to like no, set the directions for the business. So business set the direction, the KPI, some objectives of business. And our roles as product designers is to try to understand what direction can we take. So through research, through design thinking, through other like, methodologies, trying to set the direction for that uh, business and try to make sure that like, no, whatever we're doing as designers can get a positive impact on the business. So Craig is going to talk about this tonight. Yeah, you can give him a sum of applause. Hello. Hello. So, first thing, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to see you all. Thank you for Morphosis putting this on, and Seven Peaks for hosting us and the pieces of yours. So, we are here to talk about becoming a product designer. I will not lie to you, this is not going to be fun. It's going to be interesting, challenging, a little bit interactive too, we hope. So, who in this room is a designer? Doesn't matter what you design. Uh, over here. Put your hand in too. Okay. Who designs products? One. Two. Two people. And even less, who is actually a product designer now? Joseph. So if you want any tips, Joseph, come up. <laughs> First of all, this is me. I am Craig. Cake to some people, if they can't say my name. Product owner in Seven Peaks at the moment. And this is a range of things that I've done over the years. Okay, so when we talk about product design, I'm doing it from multiple different sides, right? Looking at design, looking at exactly how we get there, and then looking at the actual management of this. So, we have a little game. I want everyone to shout out, right? We'll do a countdown. If you think that these screens were designed by a product designer, Number one, ready? Take a look. Everyone shouts yes or no. Three, two, one. No. You guys are boring. Do it again. Three, two, one. Yes. Some people. Okay, Apple Health. Three, two, one. No. Too eager. And finally, Google Fit. Three, two, one. Yes. Okay. And the results? I have no idea. Okay. So Google, Grab, whoever it may be, they have different ways of working, right? And this is the whole point of going through this today. The different ways of working. 
I made all that up, so we got no clue. We'll never find out until we go there, but it's more than just visual, right? We can't tell by looking at something what's going into it. We can only tell by the output, by how it performs. So, what is product design exactly, right? When we go down into it, we have UX elements. So basically, the human first approach. Nice little graphics here. Don't focus too much on the UX part. Uh, we have the UI. <laughs> There's no kids, right? Okay. So it's more about the aesthetics, right? So you have the human aside, and then we look at how we actually make that interactive, how we present that to the users. But what is it? If it's not any of these, it doesn't fit in between them. It's a solution. It's an end result of business objectives and goals combined. And we present that through UX and UI. Beautiful crop gloves here, a good example. But we're going to focus on the goals and objectives, right? That's what we need to focus on. If it's not the experience and it's not the design of it, we have to focus only on this first to understand how we get there. And this guy made a lot of money. He got sued for designing a product based on crocs. Beautiful gloves. It's a good example of designing for specific people. So we'll go high level. Exactly what is goals and objectives to someone like us? Someone who designs, someone who may dive into user experience. But what do we do with that? Like, what is it? So they're created and maintained by the business. We don't care how they're created. We just care about what they are. And it gives us a direction. It gives us somewhere to go, somewhere to look at the future. Okay? I've mentioned time box in here because it gives us a deadline as well that we need to understand that we have to design for this. So goals, their targets, long term. There's no matrix. We don't care about metrics. We don't care about the time box itself. These are high level, right? As a product designer, you should understand exactly what that means. We know we want to do this thing, right? This is the business talking to you. We don't care about design. Not yet. And then there's objectives. These are the overall outcome that we want to achieve. They're smaller, they're measurable, so we have some way to say if these are successful. And they're time box. So this is that goal of trying to achieve it by this specific point. So here's an example. Normally, in a product, we want to look at how we fix the customer relation, right? How do we communicate with the client or the customer when there's a problem? So we might want to improve that. Maybe it takes four days, so we want to make it quicker. And the objective, this is the part where you have to start looking at, you know, breaking it down a little bit as a product designer. We want to improve the response time in red. Now we know what we want to do. We want to increase the customer service by three to eight, so we know exactly how to build. And we want in one year. Based on this, as a product designer, you now have a direction. That's the gist of it. Together, we end up with answers, okay? We understand the direction and some basic information. This answers three main areas of questions. What should we build? How do we build it? Who are we building for, right? And what value does it eventually bring to the user? So in the example, we're building a support making it easier in a specific period of time. And we're doing that by implementing more staff to increase the, the engagement. Yes, I will stop talking about that. We'll go on to something more fun. But how do we actually use these answers is what we need to address, right? From a high level, as a product designer, if we understand the goals, the objective, we should be able to put these together and do something with these answers. Now, as someone who's supposed to be senior, someone who's supposed to have experience, we need to look at how we interpret that for the design team. We have to be the people to stand up and say, 
this is what we need to do. In a way that makes sense to the rest of us. Not everybody will understand business needs or goals. So we have to be the ones to do that. We have to tell them, this is what this means to you as a designer, as someone who does UX. This helps us target research. Quite often we forget about this. Quite often we say, ah, let's just ask some people. Let's ask you guys here. But are you the right audience? Do we understand the result of that? And can we validate the assumptions that we're making? Probably not, but it helps us, it gives us direction. And it helps us prioritize design. As a designer, we don't normally care. We just go, I'm gonna design this, this is cool, and just design it, right? But the problem with that is we're doing it from the business now. We don't care about the customer at this point. The customer will come when we do it right. So we have to design in a way that makes sense for the business to deliver to the customer. There are targets, there's objectives, there is a budget, there is a go-to-market deadline. So we have to be the ones to help prioritize that based upon what we know about time boxes and the agenda. And this is something you probably have heard of but never done in your life. We have to design a mission statement for the team to see exactly why we're doing it, right? What's the purpose of us taking this feature, the data and information, and doing the design in a certain way, right? If we don't have that, the team will be misaligned. I'm guessing most of you will have worked in teams where someone's doing something over here, someone's over here, components everywhere, and there's no one driving that, right? There's no one saying, this is what we should be doing, this is how we do it. So it's your job to put that in place and to direct it, right? So product design is starting to become something more than design. And we need to educate the people specifically why it matters that we do this, right? You can design fancy buttons all you want, fancy little apps, social media apps, but if the team doesn't get it, if they don't know why, it makes no difference. There's no passion in it. And we need to empower every single person here to do a better job, right? Now, a lot of people will be sitting here, they'll go back, tomorrow they'll go into their teams, do what, you know? There's no empowerment, there's no empowerment for people in the team unless you give it to them. So it's, again, something we need to embed in the team. You own this feature now, it's up to you to make sure it's good, it's up to you to make sure you collaborate with everyone so we can achieve this goal. And this all comes from the objectives and goals from the business, right? So it gives you a map. And then of course, it's good for giving to the client. If we can showcase to the client, we understand their product. If we can go back to them and say, we understood the value. We understand what we are delivering for you and we can repeat it back to them with confidence. You're gonna win. They'll sign off on the budget, you'll get more team, do more testing, continue the project for longer. So it's good to go back with the conversion of here's the objectives, but this is how we're going to do it. They'll sign off, 100%. And you become, you know, a product gangster. You can sit and do this in your office. If you've not seen the film, it's called Office Space, watch it, fantastic. Chris will hook you up. Woo! So, top priorities though, right? If we are the ones who go speak to the client, PM, PO, whoever it is, and we ask about objectives, and we ask specifically about the goals, what's our priorities after we understand them, right? We have to find ways when we design, or when we translate that for the designers, to upsell. That's the goal that we have. Everything we do is about the business upselling to customers. Whether it's a product or a service, it's, it's what we do. Most people who are a designer will not know this. This is because no one's told you about objectives and priorities on the goals, right? So we need to be the ones to say this and show them. We can add this here because it upsells. Because now we care about the customer after we care about the business. Not the other way around. Now, we... <laughs> 
We try and locate opportunities, but we should always look at what are we providing for the business and new things we can give to the customer as a result. So if they come to you and say, we want to sell shoes, what else can we sell? And we know this because we look at the priorities, we look at exactly what we're trying to achieve as a business, and maybe there's other products we can cross-reference, we can bring in, we can make sure that we are creating this new opportunity for people. It may be upsell, maybe funnels, something else involved, but we have to do this. And we introduce existing users to old orders. And if you think about the products that you've used, you open up the app, and there's something you've ordered two months ago, right? And this is what we need to focus on as a business, but as a designer, as a product designer, we need to really focus on, do we create that for the business? Or is the design very static? If we create a static design, there's no conversion, there's no way that we can drive business. And that's how we get paid when the business succeeds that we're designing for, right? And we need to create suggestions. This one's a bit tricky because it can come in many forms, but we can make suggestions throughout flows on landing pages. If you think about all the apps that you've used tonight, Facebook, for example, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, they encourage you to do other things that maybe you wouldn't think about. Maybe you didn't want to do it, but you do it anyway because they're suggesting, they're re-engaging with you. Even when you leave the app, they'll say, this random person you've never heard of before looked at your profile. You're straight on that profile, checking their profile out, and they're also being re-engaged. So that's up to us to create this process. And of course, sometimes it doesn't make sense. That's up to us to try and figure out. This is why we have the testing. This is why we have data. If we know the data to target, we can test it. We can make sure it makes sense. So some examples in the world. Radio grab. Be prepared. This is horrible. It's ugly. So if we take the app now, we strip everything out that may have been put there as a way of upselling or re-engaging, we're left with almost nothing, right? There's almost nothing there. There's probably less than nothing. I was being very, very generous. Probably the top bar we can remove as well. We'll just have search in the bottom. But you see the idea, right? There's nothing there that isn't there without purpose. It has a purpose to it. True money wallet. <laughs> this is not a personal dick. This is just something fun. Don't cry. It's OK. You don't have anyone from True, right? OK. <laughs> we do the same thing. We pull it out. Again, I've been very generous here. I've left some stuff in here. But there is no point to the app unless we find ways to re-engage, upsell, cross-reference, make suggestions. The whole product is based on it. Every product you use is based on this. We have to assume that we, product designers, have to figure out a way to do that. And we do that by looking at the business objectives, business goals, figure out what they're trying to achieve, translate that for design, and we hopefully end up with something nice. So, well, UX UI looks at experience, the design. The product designers, hopefully, most of you will become product designers, maybe. We'll see. Uh, you satisfy the business needs, right? Satisfy the business, you end up satisfying the customers because the business is targeting those. We don't have to care 100% about the users at this point. The business is what we want. So how do we become business oriented? Can anyone guess? What's the first one? Nobody? Yes. Uh, you guys are boring, man. No suggestions at all. What do you think? Business. Huh? Business. Business. You ready? Clean, open communication. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to tell people this is what we're doing and why. You have to be able to go back to the client, go back to your boss and say, hang on a second, wait, based on what you say the objectives are, maybe we should do this first. Maybe we should do it differently. Okay? You have to translate for your team and coordinate with your PM, your PO, your 
SM. No SNM, just SM, okay? Steady. Understand and implement solid UX UI. Now, this is not 100%, but if you have an understanding of UX and you understand how to build the UI, as a product designer, this is going to help you greatly. You understand the design tags. You understand the processes we need to get to the design, to validate, to assume, and to make sure that assumption is correct. And you have to be tech friendly. Have to know about software. Now, I'm not saying everyone here has to be a, a software developer. You have to be a genius. You have to just understand some of the tech stuff that the developers are doing. If you're not sure, go ask. They'll tell you. Do we need to build the CMS? No, it's pre-built off the shelf. Don't do it. You'll commit suicide here. You, so you, you have to be able to talk to them. Talk to the developers, talk to the teams, talk to heads of departments. And you have to think about the overall system. Can anyone tell me what system first thinking is? Does anyone know what system is? Nobody. Okay, Andy. Can you think about the constraints of the system? What is the system? Process. So for people who didn't hear it, it's thinking about the constraints of the system, right? The system is end-to-end -end what we're building, what we're developing, what the overall product will be, right? This includes offline systems. If we're dependent on other software, that's part of the system. We have to think about when we implement something, What's the effect before, after, during, and offline as well? If you implement software and someone has to call support, that's an offline process that you have an effect on. You may have cost them money, or you may have saved them money. So this is something you must start thinking about. The overall picture, not just this design, okay? And it's great if you're data-driven. If you do not understand data, get into it. It's a joy. It's messy, it's horrible. It'll tell you everything that you need to know. But if you don't understand the data, then you go ask someone. This comes back to clear, open communication. It's okay to say, I don't know. I need to go find out. Go speak to someone. If you, ha if, if you have the luxury of having data analysts, go ask them. They will do it for you. They will show you how it's done. And then you interpret that data so you understand what you're doing, right? That could be as simple as, 4,000 people entered the website and dropped off. Now you understand there's a problem there. Okay, understand the data. Now, one of the problems with this, with this whole product situation, is no one wants to tell you how to do it. Okay, nobody knows how it's subjective. It depends on your company, it depends on you. Where you start, everyone's different. So I've tried to put this together in a way that makes sense, okay? Hear me out. So, you gotta get the basics up and running first to advance, okay? Goals and objectives. Go research that. Literally, go ask your team. Go ask your boss. Anyone who's in your team who has anything to do with product, this includes Scrum Master, product owner, like Andy, uh, doesn't matter who it is, someone who can control the objectives. Even if you ask the client, What's your objectives? If they say, I don't know, tell them, you have to figure that out. We need this. We need to understand what we are building. We need to know the goals. Without that, we're guessing. We don't know. We're designing an app that may or may not work, right? And we have to be better than that. That's what sets people like us aside from everybody else, that we're going to use these to achieve it, right? This is product first approach. Next. Design initiatives. When we're designing stuff, you don't just design. Probably, most of you will. All of you will, in fact, probably just go in here and design stuff, right? We've all done it, I've done it. It looks nice, keep it. No. no, 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 no. Create initiatives. Why are we doing this? We're going to do this feature because it gives us value. If you have enough of these initiatives from the design team, you can go back, you can show your client, your boss, this is why we want to do these things. You can then shrink that down, scope it down. We're going to do three by the end of the year. We can do another two in the start of next year. That's enough to go back and to propose development. 
right? It's enough to go back and say, we need to do research. We now need copy. We now need UX. We now need UI. So create these initiatives, right? Understand them, research it. Key questions. Can anyone tell me what this is? Nobody. Oh, come on. Guys. OK, one more time. Someone. Yes. It's another question. <laughs> Correct. Key questions. It's when you ask a question in a way that triggers a response that you need. Okay? If you go into a meeting or a workshop and you say something ridiculous, take something like, ah, oh, why do you want to create an app for burgers? They'll tell you because we have customers. What you want to do is be more precise and say, why are we building this for this particular user and what's the value that you want to get out of it? Ask these questions. Be specific. Drill into things. There are techniques for key questioning to help you do this, to think critically and ask those questions. Without this, you will just end up asking the wrong things. Some things you do not need to ask, okay? But you need to get that response from people. This includes your own team. Design Defender. No. No superheroes. OK. As part of our job, we have to justify why we're doing things, right? We have to go back, just like developers do, just like your boss does. They have to justify every single thing you do. And if you tell a designer, design this because of this value, and someone says, hey, this is not right, you can say, hang on a second, wait. So let's pull up the data, let's show everyone, and let's explain it to them. Defend the design you're doing, defend the team. You have the data, you have the objectives, you know the direction. So you have to be the one to step up and defend that, and tell them why. And you have to be proactive. This is a big issue. Let's talk about this for a second, okay? Guys, don't sit in meetings, okay? And just go, yes. Chai, Kyle. Chai. Chai. No. No. Don't do it. Please. Say something. Speak up. Say, wait, wait, hang on a second. We can do this over here because it makes more sense, right? Talk. Communicate. Do something that makes sense, but don't wait on someone to tell you. Why? You're all seniors. You're all product designers. This is what you want to do. Yes, okay? So push ahead, don't wait for people to tell you to do it. Pick something, validate it, present that. And you need to start looking at a career plan. Yes, this is, a, this is a touchy one, career planning. Most of you in here will be sitting there saying, I can do this, I can do that. I can guarantee you, you can, 100%. What you need to do now is go home, go through all the job lessons in Thailand, right? JobZB, LinkedIn, to all the skills they are asking, put it into a spreadsheet and see what you can do, right? If you don't know, you have to go away and research what you will do. If you don't know what you can do, you've got to go forward, right? There will be gaps, and it's fine to have gaps. It's fine to say you don't know, I cannot do this. But research it, find out. You need to start doing this, right? Without knowing, you can't move forward. And this is something you have to do. I always tell people this. You've got to you know, spend the time to do it. Don't ask your boss to do it. Don't ask someone else. So you look at career planning, please. Find out what you need to improve on and do it. Nail it completely. And you need to push for change. Don't be scared. This comes back to what I was saying. Don't just sit there and say, yes, yes, no. Don't, it's terrible. Need to push, need to ask someone, like, can I do this? No, tell them, we are going to do this, we need to do this, and justify it. If you have data, if you understand, if you have process and flows, and you have the objectives, why can't you not push for change? You know, why not? Everyone in here is equal. Whether you're a CEO, CTO, whether you're a junior graphic designer, they can come up and say, this doesn't make sense. There you go. That's the push for it. 
you have to start understanding how to do it. Every company is different, so don't get fired. Don't come back on me, okay? But you have to push. There's no other way to do it. And I'm going to go into this a little bit, right? This is personal experiences here. This is a lifetime of making mistakes. Don't make the same ones, okay? So this is some things I've learned. You need to commit yourself. That's number one. You need to push, right? It takes time. As a product designer, you want to look at the goals, objectives. That doesn't happen overnight. Goals and objectives are from the business side. They're hard to understand for a reason. They're broad, they're big. The objective gives you information. But you have to spend time learning. How do I translate that? How do I practice moving it from this business unit to the design team? Right, it takes time. You can come here in Seven Peaks, we will show you. Or Fosis team will show you. Or we'll try. You all seem nice, but can't promise anything. There's a lot of information, and this is why tonight I struggle to build this, right? I struggle to look at just the highlights of what we need to do, because it's so difficult. There's so much information, right? It takes time. I'm going to go through things in a methodical way. Look at goals, objectives. Look at how we organize and prioritize, and start building it over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Come to terms with the fact that you will probably never design the same way again. 100% guarantee it. Your job is not to design. Your job is to understand, translate, and to push for change. If you are sitting there every day designing, then you're not. Oh. Oh. Hello. Okay, good, we're back. If you're designing all the time, you're not being product. As simple as that, you're a designer. Go do design. Go do design, okay? But if you are sitting there and you spend most of your time looking at objectives, trying to understand from the PO, from the Scrum Master, what we need to do next and what order, why, and the values, then you are becoming product, right? You've got to come to terms with this. This is a hard one. Even Jeremy won't let go. Right, Jeremy? Sometimes, yeah. You will struggle 100%. You will want to meddle in the design. I can change it. No, stop. Stand back. We are products. We are supposed to help guide the product, right? Stop going into design. Start focusing more on how we can help other people. So, this one's hard. This is going to be. 90% of the people here, they will not be able to do this. 100% guarantee you. You need to stop and you need to split your time between decisions. Okay? It's going to be hard for people. You'll have decision over here and a decision over here, and you will not know how to decide. You will spend most of your time in these situations understanding what one comes first. How do we prioritize between the two things? It's not easy. It's a tough, tough job, and you will have to organize yourself in a way where you can go back, you can look at the choices, you can decide what should come first. If you don't know, ask. Coordinate with your team, coordinate with the client, the customer, your boss, whoever it is. And accept that despite of being beautiful and sexy now, it may not be what you need or want. Right? You want something to solve the problem and make it look amazing, but no, it's not going to solve the problem. The customer can't do what they need to do. It's not going to give you the value. You're not get the output. So you need to come to terms with this really early on. The beautiful things just don't work the way you think. Right? And data is your friend, even though it's definitely the opposite of friendly. If you are needing information, you need to validate. Google it. That's as simple as you can get. What are other people doing? Let's look at the number of people using the app. Let's look at the number of people doing stuff. That's not fun. It will look horrible. It gets you the results, though. No? I think this is something that everybody in here needs to do more, including myself. Look at data. 
Yes. Goals and objectives. That's difficult, right? But you have to leave here tonight and think about it. What do I do as a designer that base, is based around this? It's, it's not simple. It's complicated, but it's needed. As a product designer, you have to think only about the business first. The customer comes after. The customer comes after. Everyone else is dealing with the customer. You know, you have users who are being dealt with by UX, by UI, research teams. If you're in a big company, you'll have a whole department for this. Your job is different. Goals, objectives. If you see something that's not an objective, you can raise it, you can ask a question. That's because you're thinking about it. It can be time consuming to do user research, but this is something that every team needs to get into. You can start a project and you can run the project, but you need to spend time moving into a user research process so you can go back and validate. A lot of teams, a lot of you guys will never have done this. You've seen it, you've heard it, people will have told you, ah, yeah, we have results from the user testing, UAT, yay. But do you know how it's done and do you know the actual results? What was the questions you asked them? Why? If you're asking questions that don't make sense, then how can that be based on the goals and objectives, right? You've got to do this. You have to be the one to lead it in a way that makes sense for the rest of the team. It's a different thing than you need And don't try and do it all yourself. There's no one in this room that's perfect, that's fine. Collaborate. That's what we're all here for, right? We need to work with each other. We need to work with people we don't like, people we love, hopefully less of the people we don't like. But we're a team, who cares, right? If they're doing their job, we do our job, let's get on with it, let's do it. Collaborate with everyone. There's no excuse not to. And you can collaborate with other teams, okay? So don't think that, oh, this is my team, that's it. No, it's not your team. You're an employee, that's your job to come in here and do it. Collaborate with the whole company. Go ask other teams. What are you guys doing? Why are you doing it? What worked for you? Collaborate. And then come to Seven Peaks and Morphosis. Come here. We will help you learn more. Literally. This is what we're trying to do. This is why we've done this, right? Is to try and get you thinking differently and moving on to something else. And it's as simple as that. Now, I was a bit worried about the Q&A part, but I think it makes sense, right? That was an amazing presentation, very amazing talk, very well structured, and very good job. That's why you're a product owner, I guess. You saw about it. I had a run. Very, very good. Okay, we have like 15 minutes, so if you guys want to ask any questions, that's time to greet him. Yeah? So just raise your hand, and I'll come to you and give you the microphone. Microphone. Uh, she has a microphone. Why do you have the microphone? Hello? Okay, we're good. Yeah. Questions? Who's first? Yeah. Oh. Hey, great. Thank you very much for that. Um, really insightful, and I can appreciate the pragmatism of this, and I can appreciate the workflow and the efficiency. Also, you know, this this is um, you, you can add billable hours to this, and, and you can be very transparent in terms of, of how you operate. Um, I also think there's a there's a concern that there's a degree of ubiquity about everything, you know. There's an argument that everything looks like everything else, you know, and that is very efficient in terms of business. But with what you're talking about, how could we build a case for creativity and imagination and disruption and innovation and speculation and all of these things which are not necessarily incremental leaps, they're intuitive leaps of faith? That's my question. Okay, so that's a tough one. Could have started easy on me here. Could have been like, hey, what are you doing on the weekend? Um, this is where we need processes, right? We need them to work in two ways. Rigorous, 
in a way that makes sense for the business, makes sense for us to operate, and we need it in a way that we have an escape from the process, right? There has to be something there that gets us out of that so we can look at the initiatives. And it's up to us, as part of the designers, to look at the overall initiative for the business, figure out what those are, figure out how we then create initiatives. Because nothing's ever done, right? We have to go back and say, we can use this, we can use what we've done before, and figure out something new, and then present that. We have to justify it, we have to present that to the team, it has to be clear, it has to have its own objectives, and it has to show the value. So if you do the process right, then you can come back to something before and present it as something new. So we need that process to work for normal teams and a process to break out of it so we can actually create these initiatives, something new, something different, and present that to the team. When it comes back to collaboration and clear communication and research, you've got to validate, communicate, and then work together to make sure that's new initiative comes out of it. And you need to push for it. You don't just sit there and say, oh, okay, we won't do it now. I understand. Yeah, yeah. No, you've got to push for it. See, this is something that will bring value to the customers. We checked it. We have data. So you have to go back and suggest this process for going back, resampling something a couple of months later and seeing if you can do something new with it or if you need to create a new project or a new process. Hopefully that answers the question. Next, something less hard. Awesome talk, Craig, Sarah, hi. Um, my question is around um, lobbying with stakeholders and championing initiatives. One of the things that you touched on was to, you know, try to form some sort of strategy, goal, objective, product vision, um, but in corporations, especially enterprise level, we're looking at various different people all in the mix. You've got a product analyst, you have BI, you have technical leads with different agendas and also different responsibilities. Um, being a product owner, one of the things that is a pain point is to rally all the people to try to get consensus. Um, especially in the face of like technical debt or innovation or something cool. What's your advice to people like us that are working in really big organizations with you know multiple product owners, multiple product managers, and then a whole team of people that all make one particular decision or one feature? Come work here. <laughs> so we we'll have the group in the back. We've got Paper, pens, okay. So I've been there, the organization site. Most recently, took a six months hiatus. Um, the number one thing that I found difficult was, was this lobbying. You know, it's not easy to know who to go to, who to speak to. For organizations in particular, and I think for agencies, we have to do it slightly differently but it comes down to the same thing. You, you've got to talk to people, individuals, one-on-one. -on -one. You have to understand, number one, what they're doing and why, right? If you're talking to a commercial team, they maybe they don't want anything to do with the product. They've got some other agenda with some other part of the system. Understand that. Talk to them, communicate with them. Go to the next person. This is not quick, 100%. This will take you months to do, but do it. It's worth the effort. Go get people on your side. Explain why you want to do what you want to do. Justify it. Show them. Here's the idea. Okay? Here's objectives that I think make sense that help us solve the overall business objective and get them on your side. You are stronger with a team of people than you are by yourself. If you go into that meeting, you will die 100%. I've done it. I've been there. I sacrificed myself for everyone. And it's not fun. The only time that I won anything in corporations was to go around and speak with people. I literally went on lunches with people on the weekend. They liked them, they were nice though, had a nice lunch. Next week, we were in meetings actually justifying the same thing. We aligned on that because it's business. 
So I hope that helps. One-on-one -on -one communication, explain what you're doing and why, get them on your side one-on-one. -on -one. Because when you go forward, you'll be stronger, 100%. Any advice for those that work remotely? 100%. Come to the office. <laughs> Come to the office, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you're working remote, the same process, right? But you have to be visual. You have to be seen. We can't see you if you're online, you know? We can't see or hear you. Only when you message us. You've got to be more vocal. You've got to come forward, call people, be active, be present. If there's a meeting happening, Say something, speak up. Hey, hey, guys, wait, I have this idea. And then start talking and communicating. You know, who do I talk to after the call? Ask, it's fine. So remote, you can do the same thing, but be more present. All right, next question. I'm getting warmed up now. So. An hour, one hour? Okay. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Hello. Hello. Um, Earlier back in your presentation, you were talking about if someone had to push something, like even if you're in the, in the least position with the least experience. So my question here is, let's say that if, if you work in a place and then maybe you're a young designer, young researcher, and then you were tasked to do something, somehow there's a conflict between the top level. How would you convince them? Because one would say something, and then they are always check their opinion, but either way, you would have to go with one of them. So, am I the person in the middle, going between the two things? Tough decisions, like the slave slaves, right? You're going to be left in a situation, it will happen. You will have someone who comes in, they'll raise a good point, and you'll think, ah, oh, God, we missed that one. And then you'll have management saying something different. Validate it. Go ask the questions you need to ask to validate what they're saying. If you go check that, what they've raised, or you go and look at data, it takes five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour. If it takes a day, do it. When you go speak to the management and you say, we have a problem here because this does not align with what we're trying to do. We need to change it slightly and we can update that agenda, right? So whether it's someone junior saying something or someone senior saying something, same process, validate it, look at it, research, ask the right questions to understand if that makes sense or not. Because maybe they just raise something and you think, we've already spoke about this before. We know the answer, we know why it's like that. But if you don't check, you don't know. So I would always say validate, research, ask questions, and then go back and then try and push back on management. At the end of the day, you can only do it so many times. Management will say, just do it. Okay, it's documented, the results are there. If someone asks, you can come back and direct them. This is what we've seen, this is what we've done, okay? But it's your butt that you need to save. Because people will ask you, why did you not do this? Right? So hopefully that answers the question a little bit. Always validate. Work on your arguments as well. Yes. Like, no, no, it's very important like, not to be able, like, if you've got an idea, they don't understand what you're trying to say, but they don't want to follow your idea, whose fault is that? Is that their fault or your fault? It's easy to judge someone else. But if you work on your arguments, be the case for yourself, why can't they listen to yourself? That's your fault most of the time. So be that case for yourself. Build your arguments, your words, to explain that idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I better start up. Hi, I'm Zia. I uh, work in the university, so kind of boring place. Okay? So the question is uh, kind of same thing I heard kind of from corporate. The issue is about the bureaucracy because I do, we deal with the, most of the companies for projects for uh, setting up like, the website and other thing designs. But the biggest challenge comes to translate the ideas from this side to that side, always. Because uh, when you work with the graduate schools, like people are all are on average 50 plus, 60 plus people. They have one ideas, right? They want to see. Uh, but the Customers, I mean, these current students, things are changing. Especially after the COVID time, I see that things and everything become like a Netflix kind of things. Every, everybody wants something, subscribe, everything, A to Z. They don't want to go and dig and find like what the we used to do probably 15 years back. So my question is about the first thing when you say the system design uh, thinking. 
because uh, I'm kind of from, from an IT background, but when you say system thinking, but these days, we put the client first, and we're going to see what they want now, what next five years and 10 years. Uh, but in the, our system, people want to see what they want to do in the next five or 10 years. So people who are in the middle like us, our challenge is how to bring both in the same place so the product goes on. Otherwise, every time we see whatever we develop, even, even for uh, academic programs, every two, three years is a challenge, uh, is things are changing. So I think I was able to bring the questions, how to bring this both sides in between. Okay. Thank you. So that's a tough one. It's a tough one. You guys are good. You're getting paid, I can tell. Don't come back. Yes. <laughs> Go. Uh, so this doesn't mean that this does not work. It doesn't mean that it does work. What it means is that you have very, very broad goals for the business, we want to achieve this, okay, it's long term. The objectives are set from the business. It does not mean that we, as a company, who come in and work with you, it doesn't mean that we cannot have objectives as well. So what you need to do is look at both sides and say, okay, these are business objectives, this is where the business needs to go from now until 10 years. How do we then look at one year, two years, three years, and go that low? You can have objectives that are six months, but they're product-based, they're not business-based. So you need to look at where does the software go? You know, And again, don't care too much about the customer yet, because we will take care of that in the process when we do the research, when we do the, the deep diving of UX and UI and whatever else we're doing, we'll do UAT. We'll ask them that. But what you need to look at is, how do we align these smaller objectives that we can achieve between now and one year, right? Because if you work with agencies like Cinepix and Morphosis, we'll ask you that question. What is the first step? How long does that take? Is it one month? Is it six months? And we'll try to base our objectives for development or design on that, right? Because otherwise, we have no idea, right? We don't know what we'll do in 10 years' time. We don't care what we'll do in 10 years' time because it can change. Technology will change. So you have to align with both sides on the product objectives. What do we want to do in six months, one year, two years? And if you take both sides and you sit in a workshop, you can agree quite quickly on what will happen next and in what order because you'll find that there's overlaps between objectives, but there's also objectives that fall out of that range for the business. Then you can have them later, you can come back visit them, and then we can prioritize the ones for now. So it doesn't mean you go crazy and try and create 10 million objectives, you just look at products, right? Look at software, and then have both sides in that conversation. If the agency doesn't know, just come to Seven Peaks and Morphosis, we'll do it for you. Sales pitch. Chris is up the back here, raise your hands. There you go, speak to this guy. But does that answer your question a bit more? Break it down into products. You want to ask? Uh, so my question is, um, how do you know when the, the, the organization you worked for doesn't have the, the maturity to have a product designer? As in, at which point, like I think that everything you've done a really good job at saying how hard it is that you have to work really, really hard to bridge the gap and everything. But at some point, the organization is not willing to give you the objectives, to be too tech-led, to not listen to what you're trying to say. How do you know when it's time to just say it's not going to work? This is where career planning comes in. You have to go get a list of all these things that you, as a product designer, believe you should do based on the market. It's always going to change. Next year, there'll be something new we have to do. Get that list first, understand where you are, and ask the question to management. Go to management and say, I can do all this stuff. We need to look at moving forward. Coordinate one-on-one -on -one with people to get them on your site, like we were saying earlier, and go to management with that plan and say, we are missing this role. We can do this role internally. We can do it now. And this is why it's going to solve the problem and this is how we're going to do it. And when you have four or five other people, 
because I know the developers will back you up. They need someone who gains them as well. Then management will ask that question, like, do we actually need it? And if they ask that question, then yes, you do. It's already past that stage. So I would go back to career planning first, understand what you can do and the value you will bring if you can do it, what you need to learn, and then one-on-one -on -one with people, get that team together first that can back you up and then present it to management. And again, they might say, we don't have the budget, we don't have it in our forecast. Push for it, justify it. You know, you have to push for it. Otherwise, you're going to mess out on opportunities for your clients and your customers and for the business. Does that make sense? Okay. We should have like elevate your music. Can move it? Hi there. Oh. Hello. Thanks for this great presentation and your energy. Really enjoying things. Um, I was wondering where could you put the limits between product marketing and product design? I'm a product marketing guy, so I know some stuff. Interesting. And yeah. I just want to know where, where is the limit. This is something that the organization, I think, as a whole, needs to, to put the boundaries on as well, not just yourself. Because quite often, and you'll experience this in different roles, you will say, oh, I can do this too. I can do that, yes, yeah, I can do this as well. Because you can, because you understand. And especially from a product marketing side, you'll know things that other people will not. So maybe you could step in a little bit and do more, but it's up to you, your team, and for the organization to decide that boundary together. Because otherwise, you'll do everything yourself, and then that's not cool. But I would say, look at the industry, look at what you can do, and look at what the business needs, and then agree. Because quite often you'll find that you know you'll just end up doing more and more and more and more, but it's not right, right? You won't have time to focus on the things that you need. If you need to get someone else in, list out what you need to do, go look for that role. Hundred percent. You need to coordinate. Otherwise, there's no way of separation between the two. And again, everything changes every year. Maybe next year we look for product marketing guys specifically. So it, it changes. Coordinate them. Otherwise, you'll end up being Superman. It's not a bad thing, but it's not great. <laughs> Who's next? Okay. It's 8.25, so just one more question. If anyone has, then we close this one. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Uh, thank Hello. you for your presentation. Um, so, so you mentioned that despite being a product designer, we shouldn't expect to work uh, for uh, as a designer for 100%. We, yes. we only work uh, design work for 30%. Uh, uh, so, yeah. so what specifically that we do for the, so the other 70%? Okay, great question. And also, a little um, follow-up question. Um, is it different for UX UI design, designer? Does, does the same logic apply to the other roles? Okay, so as a product designer, your main job is to translate to figure out what's next, right? So if you imagine every day you come in, you sit at your seat, log in, the first thing you're going to do is start looking at what meetings do I have today? What workshops do I have? Who do I need to speak to to follow up on tasks from yesterday? Then you start moving into coordination with other teams Right? So like developers, I need to follow up on this function, this feature. I need to look at the business side. Do we have more coming into the backlog that we need to concern ourselves about for design? Because quite often, we have POs and PMs and SMs and all these acronyms for everything. But at the end of the day, you have to be the one who goes and grabs stuff for design and says, we need to get ahead of this one. We can't spend three weeks doing this and delaying development or delaying the business needs or falling off that goal. Right? So you spend most of your time coordinating and updating from a product design point of view. And then at some point, you'll start going into workshops, they will start translating with the design team, and then you'll eventually get to that point where you're going through lo-fi, you're going into hi-fi, reviewing, sense checking, approving, and going back and presenting. Right? You also need to do research. So there's a lot that you can do, and over time on the project, 
then that role should get less and less and less to a point where you start doing a lot of research, a lot of data analysis. So you never really grow in terms of the design you do, but the, the priorities change between you know focus on getting up and running and motivating the team to sense checking validation of everything that you're doing. And it should be an endless cycle if you do it right. If you do it wrong, you'll end up sitting there all day designing stuff. That's not your job. For UX, again, they have priorities for understanding the users. So they should also go through the same process where there is that, that band of design that they will do, but then they need to keep on checking, they keep on validating, keep on doing sprints. If you don't, then you end up just stopping. There's no innovation anymore. There's no initiatives. There's no way forward. There's no new value. And as we said before, your job is to create engagement, right? Bring people back, upsell. We need to continuously look at that process. So to answer the question simply, you're doing a lot of stuff during the day that will not be designed. At some point, you will touch it, but it will not be the same. You're not UI, you're not UX, you're products. And, and how do you communicate that to the client? Because you are called product designer. Yeah, so you need to tell them this. Be honest with them. They understand that you have to do other stuff. We have this situation all the time in agencies where they expect you to be 100%. When you say 100% on this project, it doesn't mean 100%. It means I will do my best to achieve 100%, but I have to take calls, I have to communicate internally, I have to have my lunch. Be honest with them. Tell them, okay, I'm going to do research, we're going to do this initiative, I'm not doing design yet, I'll do design at this point when we believe we have results. Be honest. They will come back, they will challenge you otherwise, and then you'll get caught out, and then you'll get in trouble. So just be open yeah, and tell them exactly what you're doing. Win them on your team. Like we were saying for one on ones this works with clients too. Get them as your stakeholder to promote what you're doing, and that will back you up with the rest of the team too. Does that answer the question? Sure. Cool. All right. Uh, a few more things before we finish. So uh, I'm not sure, like, you no, know, we get like, you no, know, these uh, numbers. I'm not sure, like, many of you great. Does everyone have a number? I don't know what we do with that now. We get a prize or something. Like, you no, know, is that now? Like, do no, we announce it? Who's announcing? Someone responsible for that shit? <laughs> Speak up now. Or, like, you no, know, we just go back home. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, you have two minutes to find your number. I hope you know what we're doing. If Jeremy wins, we're in trouble. Put 22 in there. That's my number. So. Uh, okay, everyone, don't miss it yet. Does everyone have their numbers ready? Yeah, take it out from your pocket or wherever you have it. I'm not sure who win. What do we win? You'll we'll figure out in a second. We have a box of socks. Box. Empty box. We have an empty box, people. Okay. Do you want to carry it down or do you want to press it? Okay. We're going to carry it down, people. You'll find that we're going to win you. Okay. Andy's surprise. Andy's surprise. Okay. Five. Four. Come on, people. Five. Two, one. One, one, three. Nobody. Two. Do it again. Fifty-four. Is she for any way now? Yeah. One. Come on. Get up here. Come on. Here, sir. Okay, you gotta open it. Try and open it. Okay. Mystery box. We have. Wait, that? What's up, Otter? Herschel bags. We have thermal thermos flasks. Shell. There's a proof like that. There's some. Uh, what is that? It's just a bag, okay. 
Hey, come on, turn the shoulder back on. Yeah. Go, go, go. Please help you. Please help back, the other back. Thank you, everybody. Well, well I'm not finished yet. Ah. So, we are more for these at the Olympics, like two companies, like the Donia Major. We're looking for UX designers, UX UI designers, UX researchers, and we're looking for like Node.js uh, and uh, .NET and uh, a lot of other positions as well. So if you want to join Morphosis for the Olympics, please come to talk to us. We've got a lot of positions right now, like something like 20 or 25, like way too many. But if you want to join us, probably there's something for you guys. So that's it. The next event will be in November, so it's not scheduled yet, but something like around like November 23rd, I think, or something like that. With the next event, but I've got to find the speaker, it's uh, Dylan. But I've got to secure this one a bit more, I've got to get everything. So Dylan is going to be there next uh, next week, uh, next month, sorry. Uh, whereas, I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much to Craig for tonight. Thank you very much for joining. Just be that, just be this. So just stick around, just enjoy, do some networking, get to know people. And if you want to go back home, that's okay as well. Thank you very much.